Tom. Tom. See you, man. All right, we'll ask Coach Beeline to make that opening statement and then go to questions uh, for the three students. Coach? So I, I was really, uh, I, was, I was impressed with Iowa and I saw them play several times this year, both on video and we played them. Watched the game last night. Um, got so much really, really uh, good young talent. Uh, very young team that uh, is going to make a lot of noise in the Big Ten in the future. So I'm proud of our guys because it was not, a, a, if you just look at the stat lines, uh, the only way we could win that game was defense. Uh, the foul shots didn't go in. The threes didn't go in. I uh, just think one guy made a three. That was the exact opposite of what we saw at Maryland last week. Uh, but we'll take it. Uh, our defense won the game. Uh, Xavier, Xavier Simpson did an incredible job on Bohannon. I mean, just uh, again, just did a wonderful job. It's just a lot of energy to get that done. He did a great job. And then everyone else just sort of pitched in. They're a really tough guard because uh, Garza and Cook can all shoot. And they a little bit like us, they spread you out, and it's tough to get to all the shooters. So great win for us. Quick turnaround, Nebraska tomorrow. Questions uh, for Charles, Xavier, and Duncan, please. Start back here in the back. Uh, what does this win say about the depth of this Michigan team? Uh, Duncan, I'll let you take that one. Uh, I think it says a lot. You know, foul trouble, obviously, early in the first half, and then again in the second half, and guys to come in and step up. Uh, is huge, and you know that's what you need this time of year, a deep bench, and I think we had that today, which was really important. Go right out here on the right. Yeah, you, you guys struggled from three throughout the game, and coincidentally, the only shot you hit in overtime was a three-pointer. How were you guys able to, to fight through not having a great shooting night and still being able to come out with the win? Xavier, let you take that one. Um, just being able to stick together. Uh, we fought through adversity, got some tough calls out there. We just wanted to Stick together, keep playing hard, and keep playing smart. Uh, that's what we did, and we're just glad to come out with the victory. Out here on the left. Uh, what was your mindset going into overtime right after Iowa hit the big three to tie the game? Charles, let you take that one. Um, well, we just knew that it was win or go home, and we understand that they made a great run at the end, and we said we're just going to stick together and just try to come out here with the win. Teddy. Duncan seems like you've been doing this forever, kind of hitting big shots and threes. Um, describe the play, and did it feel great coming off your hands? Uh, yeah, it was a great play call by Coach B and X. Um, it was a good screen by John and a good pass by Charles, I think, right? Charles, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it all stems from my teammates and coaches and giving me the confidence to, to step in and, and take that shot in the first place. And, you know, today, fortunate, fortunately enough, I was able to make it. Here on the aisle. Duncan, sticking with you, and really maybe for the other guys too, when you're missing, when the team is missing, does that sort of become contagious too? Do you sort of find yourself you know, a little more pressure of, man, we just got to hit one of these? Um, and I'm wondering from Duncan's standpoint, how do you overcome that if that's the case? Not necessarily. Uh, you know, we know we're a really good shooting team, and you know we've done it a lot this year, and we certainly do it every day in practice as well. It's something we emphasize. So, you know, if if they're not going early, we just like to think of it as you know water's going to find its level. So, you know, fortunate enough we were able to make some late, but at the same time it just puts more pressure on our defense, and um, you know we stepped up in that area today, and we knew we needed to have a heightened sense of urgency on that end. Xavier, want to add anything? Um, just being able, when Duncan hitting shots, we just, our momentum increases. Uh, we get going. Um, our energy just gets better. But um, we all feel like, as you said, we're a great shooting team. We just have to keep shooting and just stay confident. Oh, uh, back to Teddy. Duncan, if I'm seeing this right, there was only one game you didn't score this year, and it was Nebraska? Yeah, I, I think so. I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously they're playing really well right now. So, um, you know, they kind of put it, put it on us at their place this year. And I know they're gunning for us because, uh, you know, they're, they feel they're in a do or die situation. So we got to match their intensity and, uh, you know, we'll be ready for them come tomorrow. Go ahead. Uh, for the three players, this is the first time that the Big Ten tournament is held here at Madison Square Garden. Um, what are your thoughts and feeling on playing in the biggest stage in sports? Xavier, start with you, please. 
I mean, it's great. Um, the atmosphere is great out there. I'm just glad to be able to play an arena like this. And uh, I'm just happy that we can get our first victory here and hopefully we can continue. But as far as just playing here, it's just an amazing feeling. Just come down the road, Duncan. Uh, it's incredible. Um, you know, being an East Coast kid growing up, you know, this is the, the mecca of it all. So I feel very fortunate to, to be here and specifically with this team. You know, I feel like, you know, we can band together and, and do something special. Yeah, you know, the experience playing here is second to none. Um, this is every childhood dream to play and be able to say that they played in the garden. And especially, like Duncan said, having a great group of guys, I wouldn't rather do this with anybody else. Got time for one more right here. How do you feel that you guys have changed as a team since the last meeting in Nebraska? Uh, Duncan, I'll let you wrap it up. Uh, I feel like we've grown a lot. I think that was one of the first teams that really started switching ball screens. Um, so I think we've learned a lot since then. I think a lot of people have... You know, as a team and individually, we've grown a lot. So, you know, hopefully that will uh, be on display tomorrow. Fellas, thank you very much. You may return to the locker room. The uh, Michigan locker room is open until 5.50. It's 5.30 right now. We'll take uh, questions uh, for Coach Beeline. Start out here on the left. Coach, with uh, Mo and Muhammad Ali in foul trouble, do you, do you think you had to get creative with the lineups at the end of the game? And how did you approach that? Yeah, you know, we haven't had that all year long. I mean, I'm just telling you, we haven't had three guys in foul trouble in the first half or uh, just our situation in the second half with guys fouling up. Some of you will do the stat. I, we probably had just a couple games. So there was some, uh, some tough breaks. And, uh, yeah, we just had to try and find ways. But we, uh, we felt John was still, his presence in there was good enough. Uh, Jordan Poole did not have a very good game, but at the same time, um, he's capable of that. And so we just we went with those. We played uh, – Duncan is a three-man a little bit. Um, so it all worked out, uh, but uh, we, don't, we want to stay away from that situation. Coach, is there a reason why we didn't see Isaiah Livers play for the majority of the overtime period? Yeah, I pro probably we felt that uh, the lineup we had was the best chance of winning. Teddy, how's that? <laughs> Coach, what did Nebraska do so well when you guys played them? The Bill Belichick uh, <laughs> impersonation. Go ahead. What was it? I thought maybe Nebraska had a Bill Belichick impersonation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was so good about the Cornhuskers the first time you guys played? Uh, if anybody's gone to Nebraska to play, it is, it is a tremendous, tremendous environment and atmosphere. And, uh, and the place was all jacked up and they were ready to roll. Um, they, have a, uh, they can go small. Um, they can play big or small. And they came in with great quickness and great game plan and uh, were just much better than us. Uh, and that's all it was. They were just better than us. So uh, I think they beat us on that day, whether it was in Nebraska or it was here or anywhere. We, hopefully we've improved a great deal uh, for some things they threw at us. But still, uh, Tim's got a really, really good team and very deserving team of being here and being in postseason play. John, you had coached here uh, in the Big East tournament with West Virginia. What's yep. it like to be back uh, with the Big Ten and with Michigan? I, I played in some quarterfinal games here. Uh, with West Virginia, but I never, uh, I don't think I've ever been in a quarterfinal game that was loud as that game was today. That was an exciting atmosphere to be in. Um, and it was, it's really, uh, you know, I don't think uh, we had to sacrifice a lot to put ourselves in this position to be in the garden. I think when it's all said and done, we'll all say it was worth it. Just when, if you witness these games that we're having right now and how uh, New York loves basketball, they love college basketball. Uh, some, something that I, I've mentioned several times, March in New York is just, I don't know why, it's a, a really uh, favorite time of mine. Here on the right. Uh, Coach, were you expecting to battle so hard so early on in the tournament? Can you speak to the overall level of competition in this tournament? Yeah, I, I, like I said, Iowa is just is right there. I mean, they're right there, just a little young. He's got all freshmen and sophomores out there. And so, and we just got enough. You could see what we were like when we took our, our seniors off the court and our junior off the court. So it is a, uh, they just really battle. And I, I'm just telling you, there's not, with the parity there is in college basketball, I don't care where there is. If you've got any, any, any games going on in a tournament right now, every game's going to be competitive. We, nobody has that home advantage. Everybody's playing for a whole lot. You, you, usually it's a play or go, win or go home. And uh, so it's a, it means a lot to just get that W. Got time for one more if there is one. <laughs> Go out here on the aisle. Coach, were you frustrated at all with the pace of the game? No. No, I was. I, I did want to run more, I think, when the, in the second half when we got 
the stick going. We got stops and we really ran, and then all of a sudden we took the air out a little bit. That wasn't me. That was a rebound, rebound again, and just walking it up the court. But I would have liked to just – I felt tr our transition offense has some really good numbers, to, and I want to do it, but we stopped. But that's me, that telling me well, we're a little tired right now. And uh, so you just go. But I don't want to play that half-court basketball like that. I don't want to get up and down. But uh, it wasn't me slowing it down. But if my point guard wants to slow it down, or Charles or Muhammad wants to slow it down a little bit, then they slow it down. And, and I, I tried to speed it up, but I thought it was fine. I, again, these, this team plays at, a, at one of the faster paces in the league. We don't, you know, our OER is really good. Their OER, but their, their pace is a little different than ours. We want to play at a pace to keep people from getting to their number in their scoring average. Coach, thanks very much. Good thanks. luck tomorrow. <coughs> Thank you.